So we're going to do a little video on the uh, water pump on a Honda Rincon. Apparently it's a fairly common issue. You'll start seeing uh, coolant drip out of a hose on the bottom of the machine. The hose is hooked to a weep hole in the, uh, the coolant pump. Initially, Honda uh, didn't specify any of the, uh, or provide part numbers for any of the seals for the water pump. And you had to buy the whole assembly at a uh, quite a substantial cost. I think part of the issue uh, these have been having is dirt and grit getting up into that weep hole. But anyway, a water pump has uh, what they call a mechanical seal or a ceramic seal, and basically you've got a little uh, ceramic deal with a rubber seal there and a uh, spring-loaded seal that ride against it. Uh, one being mounted in the uh, water pump housing and the other against the uh, impeller. And that provides the seal for the coolant. This is part number uh, 19217MAL300, by the way, is the mechanical seal. And then the next seal on the shaft uh, is just a normal oil seal, assuming I got the right part. It's uh, 91201. 965000. This is a normal lip uh, oil seal, so the lip will go towards the engine and the flat part will go towards the uh, impeller that blocks the uh, oil that supplies the bearings for the water pump from uh, getting towards the other uh, bearing. And then between those two spaces is a weep hole. The purpose of the weep hole is the uh, cooling system, of course, builds up like 12 psi or so, whatever the radiator cap is set for, and if the uh, mechanical seal fails and coolant leaks past it, it would very easily push through this uh, little rubber oil seal and you'd uh, end up with coolant in the engine, which is uh, not good. So that's the purpose for the, uh, the weep hole, and then the rubber hose hooked to it is to try to prevent mud and water and whatnot from getting up in the, the weep hole and causing damage. So in addition to the mechanical seal, the oil seal, um, this particular model, the uh, sometimes a, a water pump is built into like a side cover on a motorcycle or that sort of thing where you uh, remove the impeller and take the side cover off and so forth. This one's mounted on the front cover with two screws with the oil pump being a separate assembly. So there's an O-ring, that's uh, 91304 HN8003 that seals the, the pump assembly to the front of the engine. Then there's uh, cover screws over the impeller, two of which have seals, and that seal is 90412 HN8300. And then there's a uh, seal for the water pump cover itself, which is 19226 HN8000. Those should be the parts we need. Right now is a convenient time for me to do it. I've already drained the oil out of the machine as part of a normal oil change. And I'll drain the coolant and we'll see if I can get a couple of good pictures of the uh, coolant pump. And uh, also that uh, hose where you'll see it dripping. Okay, we have the machine on a jack. So hopefully you can kind of see this. Apologize for not so great lighting. So here's our water pump with our drain plug, several cover bolts. On this side you can see there's a uh, bracket on one of the cover bolts that just holds that weave pose. And you've got a coolant line and a return flow line there with just hose clamps. And I believe that bolt and this one way up in the corner serve as cover bolts and also hold the uh, water pump onto the machine. So we'll go ahead and uh, unhook those two hoses, pull those two bolts, and uh, see if we can't jiggle that out of here. Okay, so here is the water pump assembly removed from the machine. See that screw and that screw that came out. The uh, That screw and that screw have seals on them. They look like they're in pretty good shape and I neglected to buy some. But if I were going to do it again, I think I'd go ahead and place those just because it's out and then uh, these three screws retain the uh, front cover here on the back you can see uh, 
kind of a collar on the shaft there, a thrust washer and uh, the little slot where it's uh, driven off the engine. And there you can see where the uh, hose attaches to the weep hole. So I'll go ahead and uh, clamp this up in a soft uh, uh, rubber jawed vise here and get those uh, cap screws off. Here we are with those screws removed. A little uh, twist and got the uh, cover off. You can see the gasket there. And here we have the impeller. So the next step will be to go ahead and uh, get a slot of something to uh, hold the uh, shaft there so that we can uh, take that impeller off and that will give us access to the first set of seals. Okay, so I've got the impeller busted loose. Couldn't seem to find a socket that really fit that. Uh, half inch seemed to be about the closest. I don't know. I couldn't get metric really to fit well, but grabbed it well enough to get it unscrewed. So underneath here you see the uh, ceramic side of the seal, and you can see it's got some grit and uh, a little bit of a ridge worn into it. Then on the shaft side, it looks like we've got a little thrust washer. And then uh, you can just drop the shaft out of it, but there you see the uh, mechanical spring-loaded seal. Uh, so we'll go ahead and drop the shaft out of it and we'll pull that uh, seal. So real quickly, here's what the shaft looks like. It has a little thrust washer on the side. To get the impeller off, I just set it over a piece of steel clamped in the vise and uh, wasn't on there with a huge amount of torque. So that leaves uh, the other part of the mechanical seal and the bushing that the uh, shaft rides in there. Looks like there's some uh, passages to allow oil in and out of there as well. Uh, so anyway, we'll go ahead and uh, clamp that up and see if we can't get that seal out. So here we are with the seals removed. Uh, getting the mechanical seal out was kind of a pain. Ended up breaking a couple pieces. Uh, probably a blind puller or slide hammer type thing would be better. If you're going to use a regular seal puller or a screwdriver, just be real careful that you don't scratch the uh, surface where the two uh, seals uh, make contact with the housing. It's the other one being the little rubber seal. Uh, so anyway, that's all cleaned up. I cleaned up the other outer housing. I also uh, found quite a bit of dirt and gunk inside the uh, hose for the weep hole. So I think what I'm going to do is just shove a piece of uh, open cell foam up in there. Maybe I'll secure it with a uh, little dab of glue or something. Just something to keep dirt and grit from getting up in there. So then the other half of the uh, mechanical seal is on the back side of this uh, impeller. So I'll need to pop that off. And uh, then it'll be a matter of uh, finding the right size socket and pressing the oil seal in until it seats again with the lip facing the uh, engine side and then the uh, mechanical seal same thing we'll find a, a driver or a sleeve or something to press it into the housing okay there you can see the uh, oil seal is just pushed in flush there it's uh, the seal is rubberized around the outside edge so it doesn't need any sort of uh, sealant between itself and the housing and it actually pushed in there pretty easily. Same thing with the uh, impeller side of the mechanical seal. It's uh, rubberized around the outside and it just presses into that little recess there quite easily. So next will be the uh, mechanical seal itself. So I found an inch and a sixteenth uh, socket was a fairly close fit. And I just kind of gently worked my way around trying to keep the uh, seal in there fairly square and, and drove it and uh, until you can kind of hear the change in tone as you're tapping it in there that you know you've driven it uh, home. Probably could have done that with a press. This also had uh, a rubberized seal around the outside so that's pretty well got that. I will probably next, uh, well next I'll put the uh, 
shaft, remembering the thrust washer back in there. And then there's a, a washer on the threaded end. And we'll go ahead and uh, screw the impeller down. Okay, after making sure that shaft was uh, clean and removing any uh, signs of debris or anything, I coated it with some motor oil and uh, kind of gently twisting and rocking it around got it past uh, that seal. I want to be kind of gentle with that to not damage it. So next I'll put some silicone uh, lubricant on the, uh, the actual both ends of this water seal and we'll go ahead and uh, put the impeller uh, back on. And so there's the impeller. I think the spec was 12 newton meters and you want to make sure that it uh, turns when you're done. It should have some stiffness uh, from the seals but uh, if you can't turn it at all, you probably forgot one of the thrust washers, something like that. So There's that. So next I'm going to put some silicone grease on the uh, gasket here just to kind of hold it in place and uh, start putting it back together. So here it is back together. Remember uh, the two bolts that have sealing washers there and uh, put those back or replace them where they belong. Also went ahead and uh, threw a zip tie on the hose for the weep hole there, and like I mentioned before, I put a little bit of uh, open cell foam that'll still allow coolant to drip out should it leak, but hopefully will uh, prevent dust and grit and whatnot from getting up in there. So that should be uh, pretty much ready to go back on the machine. So here we are back under the machine. I'm just going to take a shot of uh, the spot where the water pump mounts and as you see there's a uh, o-ring in that bore so we'll go ahead and uh, replace that and then uh, put some oil on the o-ring there and shove it in there. Well, if I'm not mistaken this should be the correct uh, o-ring. It's the 91302MBO013 and uh, just kind of do a final cleanup, make sure there's no uh, contamination or dust or anything on that housing, and get the O-ring on. So here's a shot of it all back in, all the hoses hooked up. Uh, you don't have to kill those hose clamps too, it's easy to get those too tight, especially if you're using a ratchet. Uh, things I learned that I might do differently next time, as you notice I did this from beneath, that bolt is fairly easy to get to. The other mounting bolt you can get to from the uh, right side of the machine reaching down in there. With a jack that worked okay, but I think it might actually be easier. I just, I think next time I'd take this uh, inner splash guard off and uh, probably take about the same amount of time and just give you a little more uh, room to work. So now all that's left is uh, pouring in the coolant firing it up, blip the throttle a few times to purge any air, and I'll go ahead and I think siphon out the uh, overflow tank too and put fresh coolant in that, and check for leaks and once we get the motor oil back in the machine too, of course. Okay, so here we are. We've had the machine running for a while, checked for leaks around the water pump, around any of the hoses, and it all looks good. You blip the once you've uh, filled the radiator, you blip the throttle a few times, and you may find the uh, coolant level goes down a little bit as it purges air. And then I think I mentioned I like to pull the uh, hose off the overflow bottle there and drain it, put that hose and clamp back on, and fill it up with uh, fresh, clean coolant. Final note, if you uh, drain the oil and drain the coolant and stuff, and then come back the next day to finish doing the water pump, and you have a pan of oil sitting under the machine, don't forget to remove the pan of oil when you go to pull the thing out of the garage. It makes a huge mess. Anyway, I hope somebody finds this uh, video helpful. I know I had a few questions about the uh, rebuilding the water pump on these myself, so I hope that's a resource for somebody. Thank you for watching.